I live here. Yeah. I sold everything except one company and came here with my dog. I have another good friend, um, he's from Australia. I met him through YouTube and he was nine years in Thailand. And then he came here a, a little over a year ago and I remember him saying, oh my gosh, I should have come here years ago. But here on the daily life basis, yeah. have never felt so free. Hardly ever see police. Right. Hardly ever hear an ambulance. So this is Dan of Vagabond Awake and today we have Mark with us and he's a hoot and so I'm excited to have him here uh, telling you his story. So where are you from Mark? Um, I'm from the United States, okay. uh, born in Detroit, raised in Buffalo, New York, but have lived all over the US from San Diego to Hollywood to Vegas to Palm Springs to New Orleans to Memphis Wow! and back to the East Coast again. And where are we sitting right now? What part of the world? We are in Southeast Asia in the Antung district of Da Nang, Vietnam, or as I like to call it, the San Diego of Vietnam. Nice, nice. Is this your first time living here in Da Nang? Yes, um, I've never lived abroad as much as I traveled around the United States. I've never lived abroad before. And, okay. Um, I retired in the US and uh, moved here a year and a half ago. How did you end up in Da Nang? Um, I had exposure to uh, Vietnam over the last eight years or so. I have a very good friend in California who built a large packaging business. And a lot of packaging production, well, a lot of every production is in Southeast Asia. Right. So he has had warehousing and offices in Vietnam and China for over, over a decade. Right. So I got some exposure. And I remember the first time talking about Vietnam, he mentioned he was going to Vietnam on business for two weeks and taking his wife. And I said, you're taking your wife on a business trip? And he said, no, one week of business and one week of vacation. And this was probably 13 years ago. And I said, Vietnam for vacation? I, I was oblivious, I, I had no clue. And he said, oh, they have the most amazing resorts and beaches. That was my first, the door opening just a crack to me realizing what Vietnam had to offer. That's great. That's great. And you know, most Americans have a preconceived notion of what Vietnam is and it blows your mind when you're here. I'm glad you mentioned that. It, it really does. It really does. Yeah. Finish these, this sentence for me. Um, don't come here if you think it's going to be easy. Okay. Okay. As an American, I mean, I can't speak for all Western cultures, but yeah, it's, it's a different culture. It's a different climate. Um, I've lived in Vegas in the summer. I've lived in New Orleans, which is a subtropical climate where it rains every day during the summer. Right. But this is still hotter <laughs> and rainier <laughs> okay. at different times of the year. So, you know, and then, and culturally, yeah, it's not easy. There's things to, to get used to, things to realize they're not gonna be like they ever were before. Right. Um, so you have to come with a little bit of flexibility, open-mindedness. Right. Do come here if you think this. If you want to change, if you want adventure, if you want to widen your horizons, um, crawl out of the box that you may or may not have been living in, you know, for the last whatever. Again, especially coming from the U.S. Right, right. And then, um, so to give an idea of, of the difference of cost of living here, what do you think the average um, Vietnamese person lives on per month cost? Um, well, I have a little bit of insight into that through having hired some younger Vietnamese, through talking with friends, Vietnamese friends who have jobs and asking them, you know, what do you get paid? For example, uh, a young friend of mine, she just started working at a local nail salon. And I said, well, what do they pay you? They pay her three million dong a month. That's a hundred dollars. Everything else she has to make in tips. Um, a bartender at a popular local expat owned bar um, will make 
nine million, ten million a month right. for a full time job. Right. Um, I know some of the younger uh, in, in the workforce, like university students, they'll make four or five million a month, but they'll live four four kids in in one room with no air conditioning. Um, right. So it, it's a very different world. But I would say, you know, the average, I think the average, and there's so many variables. Um, do you live at home with your parents and they've already owned that house for three generations, so there's no mortgage, you right. have no rent. Right. Um, you know, if that's the case, I mean, they can live on three or $400 a month US. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've got your own apartment or a room or a studio, again, much different pricing in what we call the city center on the, the original city of, of Da Nang on the on the western side of the river, as opposed to the peninsula out here, which is tourist supported. Right. Um, you know, they can can have a studio apartment for two hundred dollars a month. Right. Um, but I, I would say, you know, average, maybe a more mature working person, seven eight hundred dollars a month U.S. That's, yeah, that's their cost of living roughly. Yeah. Right? And then, what, what would you say expats at? Again, Maybe not the top or the bottom, but just so many variables. Yeah. Um, and I learned a lot of this by watching and studying YouTube channels like yours and right. others before I even got here. Um, you know, again, I have friends that live in a studio apartment here in the expat area where we are now, which is a little pricier. It's on the peninsula. Um, they still live for $300, $350 a month for rent. Right. Food. You know, even if you eat Western food here, you can still eat for ten dollars a day and and stick with Western food. Yeah. Um, again, Vietnamese m food much less expensive and healthier and better. <laughs> and better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, is it uh, thinking back to all the YouTube videos that I studied, and it's that's now three and three and a half years ago. You know, can a, can an expat come and live here comfortably? Um, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah, you can do it. Are there others that may need to spend substantially more than that to be happy? I'm, I'm sure there are. <laughs> what, what would you say a, a single? How much more would a single guy here that's dating would you need another few hundred per month? Or what are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, again, do you do you do the, the favorite Vietnamese pastime socially that I see is to go buy some street food and sit on a bench on what we would call the boardwalk along the along the the uh, Waterfront. beach yeah arm in arm hand in hand because I walk my dog there a lot and that's everybody there you know whether that's that's a date so yeah it, again is it a is it a Vietnamese style dating or yeah. is it western style oh we're going to go to this expensive restaurant and let's yeah. take you know um like everything else in Southeast Asia, it's very inexpensive in comparison, of course, where, where we come from. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, a, a couple hundred bucks a month, you know, for some, you know, extra food, extra meals with when you have a companion along or a couple of little fun things to do. Not not expensive. Right, um, right. Are um, age difference relationships here accepted would you say socially i would because i see plenty of them and nobody bats an eyelash um i can remember when i first got here i was at a an, an australian friend of mine's got a bar and there was a guy playing pool with a very young gal and he was clearly well north of 50 and i wasn't sure she was legal to drink and i said what what about him he said oh that's 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 pete and uh I said, how old is Pete? I don't know, 55? How old is his girlfriend? 21. But nobody bats an eyelash. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I have no experience with, with the Philippines or, or Thailand other than YouTube you know, channel information. But no, nobody seems to bat an eyelash here. Right. And, and so do the locals in general feel um, comfortable dating? Ex yeah, you, um, you know, because of the, the cultural differences and, and the socioeconomic differences, um, it's widely known that when expats retire here, there's a certain segment of the population that sees them as a way out, right? As, as, a, as a, you know, as, an, as a means to, you know, 
move up socioeconomically, have a more comfortable life. Right. Um, so, you know, what I've learned, a lot of the young people, whether they're male or female, they've been raised in a much smaller village, sometimes two hours from here, sometimes six hours from here. But they, just like in the States, they go to the big city for job opportunity, for, for, to, to make money, and a lot of times are sending it home. So right, right. when they come from that type of a background, and then suddenly there's someone who, you know, isn't living, quote unquote, paycheck to paycheck, or, or you know, ha has that burden on them, it, it really can look like a new, a new lease on life. Right, right. But in the same breath, Vietnamese people are so friendly, so approachable. Um, when I first got here, the first week I was ever in Da Nang, I went out of my hotel and I'm walking on the beach at four in the morning because that's when everybody else was out walking on the beach. <laughs> Shocker. Just, just so approachable and so warm, the yeah. people here. Yeah, they are. They're authentic. Are people meeting more online here or are they meeting in person? Do you know about, do you know that? I wouldn't know statistics. I'm, I talked to plenty of guys that use online apps, websites. But again, going to any coffee shop, walking along the beach, I meet a lot of people, foreigners, locals, male, female, when I walk my dog. Um, and nobody hesitates to approach. Um, yeah. it's, not, it's just, again, it's so easy to meet people here. Um, I, I couldn't tell you the uh, yeah. online, online in person. Yeah. yeah, all you single guys out there, get a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Especially his dog. It's yeah. like a German Shepherd. With he, he's a very large Belgian Malinois. So either they scream and run or they're very curious and they come over. <laughs> it's, there's no in between. But what do you feel about safety here? How does it relate to where it's, you're from? It's the safest place I've ever lived. Yeah. I mean, I have a background in police work right. and security work. Okay. Um, again, I learned this through YouTube channels before I got here. The main crime in Vietnam is petty theft. Right. Don't leave anything that you don't want to lose on a table anywhere and, and take your eyes off of it. Right, right. Um, but as far as violent crime, very rare. I mean, I would maybe the only violent crime you hear about is domestic. Yeah, domestic. Little, you know, little arguments, usually alcohol involved. But, I mean, bank robberies and mur it's just, this is just, I've never felt as safe in my life is living here. Yeah, it's very safe. I agree with that 100%. So what would you say the overall feeling is here that's different? Is there, is there a tone to it or something that comes to mind? Uh, I mean, it's very relaxed. Again, this part of Da Nang, out by the beach. I mean, it's, I've never really been to, what is it, in Miami, South Street or the, I mean, oh, South Beach, South Beach, Miami. Right. I mean, I've lived in San Diego. I mean, right. this is out here amongst the locals. It's a very relaxed beach community feel. You're, you know, you're intermingled with all the tourists that are filling the big hotels right along the beach. But on a daily basis, you know, we could be when I stop and have a smoothie or see some guys and sit and drink a beer, we could be on South Beach. We could be in, you know, down on Mission Beach in San Diego. It's 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 just that vibe you know out here right um it's really nice how yeah, much time nice. do you spend each year here in vietnam like um all of it i live here yeah i sold everything except one company and came here with my dog yeah i'm not a travel around um you know six months here six months there i may when i if when i don't have a dog any longer but but with with him uh the goal is just come here and relax for a while and right. no schedule, no meetings, no. Uh, well, I can tell you, you, for a first place to go to, you've come to one of my favorite places in the world. So you've really lucked out in that. Regard. Well, it's interesting and, and I've heard that a lot. I have another good friend, um, he's from Australia. I met him through YouTube and he was nine years in Thailand. And then he came here a, a little over a year ago and I remember him saying oh my gosh I should have come to Da Nang years ago yeah so a lot of people that you know Malaysia for years Indonesia for years uh, lots from Thailand are like oh yeah it just the whole especially Thailand I mean Thailand the, just seems to be like all the time it's just 150,000 <laughs> volts running through the air and then people come here and they go oh my gosh you can breathe you can relax it's very peaceful it's here. not so yeah. intense 
So yeah. do, you, do you carry health insurance here or do you just pay as um, you go? What do you do? I don't that? yet. Um, again, coming from the States, just getting off the plane here, you automatically got health insurance based on the costs. Um, and I can give you a couple of perfect examples for me. Um, I wanted, for a couple of years, I was thinking of getting an MRI on a bad knee and a bad shoulder, but I just didn't get around to it. But it was like $1,200 for an MRI. Right. And, you know, you have to schedule it and, you know, this okay. in the States, right? This, in the States. Yeah. You know, come, you know, we can put you in, you know, next month. You know, it's not yeah. an emergency or anything. Yeah. So then I came here and I asked about a hospital and they said, yeah, Vin, Vinmec Hospital. So I go over there and uh, like to speak to an orthopedic and have them like to evaluate my shoulder. And then I'd like to get an MRI so we know for sure and see what's going on. And they said, okay. I mean, okay, what? I said, oh, you can go now. I said, now? Oh, I wasn't ready to go now. I thought we would get an appointment, you know, at least in a... No, I called on a Tuesday afternoon. I show up Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock, see the orthopedic surgeon after a 10-minute wait, not two hours, right. get an MRI and an X-ray, and then come back the next day once it's all developed and have the, the, the consultation. Right. All for the whopping price of $190 US. Including the MRI. Everything. Everything. MRI, Out the door. X-ray, pre-MRI consult and post results consult, right. 190 US. And w did the doctor recommend uh, surgery? Or no? Well, he said we could. Again, I wasn't interested in surgery. So again, the, the, the medical care was fine. Same thing with the dentist. Go in, you know, tighten this, give me a filling. Let's do x-rays, uh, a cleaning, an examination. In the US, $450, $500 yeah. here. 36 bucks out the door <laughs> and a lollipop yeah yeah people so, wonder why i didn't have health insurance for 17 years but they don't have a concept of what it's like being in this parts of the world like this yeah and why yeah. health insurance would just be stupid yeah i think at some point you know catastrophic yeah. type of event health insurance right, is, is right. good um and again I learned it through youtube you know if you get in a really bad situation and you're in the hospital for three months yeah why why you know, deplete your retirement of fund course, and, and have some type of coverage. But yeah, uh, yeah, just just being here is an amazing health yeah. insurance policy. Yeah, I I finally picked it up after just a few months ago. I finally got insurance, and it's so much cheaper outside the U.S. because it's it's non-U.S. In other words, I have to get treatment outside the U.S. Yeah. So the insurance company doesn't have to charge me as much. As yeah, it, it, it might go back to one of our earlier questions, but that. That also alludes to one of the greatest things about being in Vietnam is not just the cost of the services that you need, but how quickly you can get them. I mean, a, a, a silly little example is wanting to get a pair of shorts taken in, made smaller. Yeah. Now, at home in the States, I'd probably have to call my sister, you know, do you know a tailor or seamstress or someone that will do this? Here, if it's not a coffee shop or a, or a spa, it's a tailor or a hardware store. I mean. You, you drive for a kilometer and there'll be three ladies in a storefront on a sewing machine. Yeah. You pull in, here they are, do this. She does it right then and charges you a $1.50 yeah. instead of $25. So just everything you can get what you need much more immediately as well as, you know, a lot less expensively. Yeah, like clothing, for example, you can take an old pair of pants that you really love, take it to a tailor and say, make these again. I love them. Same material, same whatever, yep. and it'll cost less than yes. you bought that pair new 10, 15 years ago. Absolutely. It's crazy. You know, I'm, I'm, going to a, I'm going to a brand new opening of a restaurant tonight that some friends opened up that already have a very successful business, um, uh, Bikini Bottom. Right. Um, and they've opened up two new restaurants. Then another friend who's from, who's from the States who has a successful restaurant, um, Adobo Mexican Grill, yeah. he's opened up a new, a new restaurant. So uh, two friends have opened up two restaurants. So now there's, and it's just happening literally weekly here because Da Nang is still coming back to life yeah, after yeah. COVID. So sometimes when people first move overseas, there's something they miss about home. Is there anything you've missed about home? Yes. Um, I miss um, getting a coffee and it's 16 ounces right. as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to this, because this coffee, I'm a coffee addict, this coffee lasts about four minutes. A venti Starbucks, yeah. you can drive for an hour to your next client meeting and, it, and, and you're 
your friend is with you for the whole ride because it's yes. so big. So yeah. yeah, I miss very large uh, <laughs> servings of coffee coming um, from the West, coming from the States. But here on the daily life basis, yeah. have never felt so free. Hardly ever see police. Right. Hardly ever hear an ambulance. Right. Um, I mean, when I first came here and I saw a lady in a restaurant with her dog sitting on the table, I knew this was the place for me. I'm like, well, where I come from, you can't even bring the dog in the restaurant. Here, you bring them in everywhere. Right. Every bar, any restaurant, any coffee shop, any yeah. hair salon. Right. Um, sort of the day-to-day -day walking around life is very free here. Yeah. You've been in Southeast Asia no long enough. Driving rules? What driving rules? Um, <laughs> Especially here. Yeah. <laughs> the way I describe it to my friends, I mean, even business. I got into business. There was no permit. There was no building permit. There was no inspection. Right. Just you want to... I tell my friends back home, I said, on a day-to-day -day walking around basis, this is like the wild, wild west. You want to yeah. do it, just do it. As long as you're not hurting anybody, bothering anybody. Yeah do what you want to do and nobody's you know over top you with this regulation and this certificate and this permit just the level of walking around and feeling unencumbered um and and, and free to do as you like is is right. amazing here and yeah on the flip side the one thing i did hear about and i believe a lot of it was from some of your videos was well two things that saved me uh, from your videos particularly are number one don't bring a huge amount of money to any foreign country and plant it there right. just bring it over as you need it monthly if yeah. you're even going to put it in in a local bank in any 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 country and the other one that I, I planned my first trip to to Vietnam before I found your channel at the end of 2019 I was planning to come to Da Nang for two weeks yeah. to look at it as potentially starting to spend my winters in Vietnam right, and right. still go back and 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 run companies and, and my businesses in in the States but that trip got canceled because of COVID I had to cancel that trip four days before I was supposed to land in Da Nang March 8th of 2020 right. but I had made the mistake of booking the entire two weeks in an Airbnb and everybody gave me my money back except the people at the Airbnb they right. wouldn't answer my emails um, they wouldn't nothing so I lost yeah. that money right. then I saw your videos so that when I did eventually get here uh, for a, for five weeks I booked four days in a beachfront hotel walked around found the next one walked around found the next one so thank both of you <laughs> um, folks the information is invaluable okay. it will save you a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of pain in the butt <laughs> well, Mark, it's, uh, it was a joy meeting you. Uh, Chung and I really enjoyed chatting with you. The, we bumped into you three or four times now. and Really appreciate your coming on that channel and sharing your experience. Uh, amazing. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Mark. I appreciate it. All Thank right. you both very much. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Mark was kind enough to mention two of our better reports, banking mistakes and how to find a great apartment overseas. I'll put those above. You can click them now. Also, grab a free copy of my book and please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much.